Hi, beautiful people. My name is Ria Abdul. I am a journalist. I am the host of one of the biggest TV shows in Africa, The Album with Ria. And then I own a production house, RA Production. And today we're about to talk about money. And if you know me, you know that I love money so much. So I'm very excited to do this with Bella Ninja and the She Tang. We're talking about a lot of money. Make sure you better stay tuned. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Hi, Ria. Hi, how are you? I'm fine. How are you feeling right now? I'm good. I, I feel good. I feel really good. You actually look like money. I know. I know, right? I, I look like money, money. In Ghana, we say Sika. Sika waho. <laughs> yeah, you look like Sika. <laughs> okay, let's do something fun. Would you rather have an unlimited supply of Naira notes or a lifetime of free vacations? Hmm. Please give me the Naira notes. Give um, me a lot of the Naira notes in different currencies, if possible. Give me 100 Naira, 200, 300, <laughs> 1,000, everything. I don't want vacations. Give me the money. Okay, it's official. You love money. <laughs> if you could be paid in any currency besides notes, any currency, what would it be? Like diamond, gold, or something else. But if you could be paid, what would it be? Give me gold. I can sell it. I'll take gold. I'll take gold. Because I like gold, actually. I think I'm, I'm a gold lover, so. Okay, you've got expensive taste, too. So what would you say economic power means to you as a woman? Well, for me, it's very important, you know, and this is because of where I'm coming from. You know, I tell people this, like, I come from nothing, you know, um, basically had nothing. Dad died when he was when I was like two years old. My mom, single mom, you know, raising me and everything. So I come from a place where I didn't have. So I understand what it is. I have tasted having and I have tasted not having. And if there's anything I'll tell you, it's very, very important to have your own. You know, I know, yeah, yes, you can date someone that has and all of that, but hey, economic power is very, very important. And especially for a woman. Like as a woman, I don't even joke with it. Like having my own, like having my bag. It's one of the most important things that I always think about. When I wake up every morning, I'm thinking like, you need to you need to work harder. You need to have a lot because you cannot, you should not and cannot depend on you know someone. It's 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 not. A, I I grew up not even depending on. I don't depend on my mom for anything. Talk less of depending on a man. I always knew that I had to have my own. So for me, it's very very important. And these are some of the things that you know I would tell my little ones. You know when I give birth to children, these are some of the things that I really explain to them that hey. You got to have your own. It's very, very important. Totally agree with you. So on a scale of 1 to 10, how economically powerful would you say you are? <sighs> what, 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 what would you say? If you want to rate me, what would you say? What number would you give me? Maybe Just a 10 look at me from, 10. Look at me from up to down. <laughs> well, I'll give myself an 8. I think I'll give myself an 8. Not, I'm, 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 I'm doing well. I'm, I'm doing well. Flex oh. on us. Flex on us. <laughs> we love it. <laughs> So growing up in Ghana, would you say your upbringing or culture influenced your relationship with money and your understanding of economic power? Okay, so I'm going to go a little bit deep for you with this question. Um, so first of all, like I said, um, I didn't grow up with riches, um, you know, and basically from nothing, you know, nothing started from scratch. And it made me realize the importance of having your own. Now, let's take it back to some of the experiences, you know, I had, you know, that made me understand that one of the most important things that you can do or have in life is having your own. You know, one of the reasons why I left Ghana, because back in Ghana, you know, we're struggling, you know, Metro TV days, you know, we're struggling, you know, on TV, doing our thing and all. And the salary at that time could not really match. So, you know, you're working so hard, but your salary is not saying anything. And you know how media is. You guys know you have to slay. You have to look the part. So it wasn't easy, you know, for me at all. And, you know, I was dating someone at that time. And that relationship was like a do or die to me because I could not leave the relationship. I'm like, if I leave this relationship, what will I eat? And I really loved this person. We're in a relationship together. And after some time, the relationship just went sour. And that taught me something. The person got tired of me. He got fed up. You know, something that we used to really love each other now turned to hatred. And this was because I was now a burden to him. So these were some of the things that just reformed me. And I'm saying this because I don't know if we still have young girls in that position. That you are dating somebody, not even because you truly, truly love the person, but you're like, ah, what will I eat tomorrow? I can't afford to leave this person. I told myself, I do not want to date with, I cannot afford to leave this person. I want to date with, you know, 
if I like you, fine. It's not because of what you can offer me. So those were one of the things that reformed me and made me tell myself that Ria Abdul, R.A., like, you are going to blow. <laughs> you're going to have your own money. You know, you're going to be able to walk out of any relationship. Because as at then, you know, it wasn't like he was trading me great, great like that. But some of the times you cannot leave because you're like, ah, if I leave, ah, how will I do this? How will I do that? And, you know, those things just made me realize that as a woman, hmm, sister, I'm telling you, like, your bag. <laughs> I cannot overemphasize this because I'm in my bag now. So... <laughs> I cannot overemphasize. So yes, those were some of the experiences um, I'll say for me. Thank you for sharing that, Ria. That's super important. So there are many misconceptions about money that a lot of women have. And it's not just about depending on men. It's also about the fear to ask for your worth or your value. The fear to ask for more. The belief that, oh, don't let me ask for too much oh, so that we don't ch chase potential, let's say, employers mm -hmm. away. So how did your own view about money evolve as you grew? How did you have the confidence to begin to charge your worth as a TV personality and as a business owner? That's very beautiful because I remember when I came to Nigeria first, if you give me 5K, I'll host a show, honestly. If you give me 2,000 naira, I'll go and stand there. And the reason why I was doing that at that time is because I know how amazing I am. I'm not even trying to brag. I am a fantastic presenter. And at that point, I wanted everyone to see it okay but when people have not tested you sometimes they find it difficult to like oh why should i give her a lot like i've not even seen what she can do so for me that was my strategy i used that to build myself but as at now i am ria abdul i do not just come with only the beauty you're seeing i come with the inward beauty i come with the talent i come with the eloquence so right now i'm not even scared if i tell you this is how much i charge and you cannot afford it like it's not fight like I'm never even scared to tell people that this is how much I want to take. Like, honestly, at this point, before, you know, I used to be afraid, like, they don't really know me. Like, you know, am I going to do well and all? But after some time, I built my confidence. I understood my worth. And that's what I also want a lot of young girls to do. Because a lot of them are like, you are still in that, that shadow. Like, you need to come out of that shadow. You need to understand that. I am me. I, I, I bring to the table what another person cannot bring to the table. I am Ria Abdul. I speak four languages. I speak French, Caribbean, Francais. I speak Hausa, Enajan, Hausa, so say Yoruba, I'm trying. Mobo Yoruba, dear, dear. <laughs> and then, of course, Chui, me again, and so of course, Mecca Chui. So, you know, I know what I bring to the table. So, when it comes to like telling somebody that this is how much I want you to pay me, like Nigeria say, I know they fear, I go say. Awesome, awesome. <laughs> so, what's the most unconventional? A surprising thing that you learned through this journey about getting your money up if there's anything i'll tell you i learned about myself is to be a hustler because if you ask anybody that met me when i just came to nigeria they'll tell you ria abdul is a hustler i took a bike from island to channels television because at that time i was looking for work and i didn't have i'm not even trying to lie i actually didn't have money to pay for a cab i entered okada <laughs> To channels and it just made me realize that i have the hustling spirit i will hustle like i'm a hustler like you know that small girl that makes that meme i'm a hustler like that's what i do and it made me realize that i'm not even gonna say i'm surprised that i'm a hustler i already knew i had that spirit but i didn't know that i had so much like energy in me like when i want something like when i got to nigeria i told myself like nigeria there are lots of people it's saturated a lot of people are talented how would you stand out as ria abdul i put in a lot of work i hustled and with the grace of god the grace of god was surely on me the grace of god was a lot on me and the talent as well but when you talk about the hustling spirit i think that you need, you can't even talk about hustling without mentioning ria abdul because when i put my mind that this is what i want I don't think there's anything that can stop me. So if there's anything that I realize about myself is that spirit, that can do spirit, that spirit that when you want something, you go for it. So basically I'll say that's one thing that really, you know, surprised me. Amazing, amazing. And well done. So you left in the spirit of hustling, you left Ghana and now you have planted your feet in the Nigerian media space. How can women, other women push for more beyond their home countries? I love this question because um, I remember when I wanted to leave Ghana, everybody I told, they were like, what are you saying? It's not possible. You didn't even say you want to go anywhere. You say you wanted to go to Lagos, Lagos itself. But I feel like when you have a dream, 
only you understands that dream and you have a vision you you had an you have an idea so back in ghana i used to say that i'll interview some of the biggest names in nigeria and i just used to say it's people were thinking that oh ria is joking but i came to nigeria and i actually interviewed some of the biggest names um you know when you talk about nigerian politicians i've had senator Dino malaye on my show i've had rotini amechi on my show i've had honorable shinopela i can go on and on and this is just me telling you that when you have that idea make the move it may be scary i came to nigeria for the people that know me will know that i'm telling the truth i came to nigeria with just my talent and my bag you know people that know me know where i was staying before i have actually laid on the floor before i'm staying where i'm staying today all those things at some point i'm like should i give up but something kept ringing in my mind that ria you had this dream ria you said that you were going to be a star ria you said you will stand out in nigeria i'm not where i want to be right now but you can see that I'm definitely getting there. I own a production house. I own my equipment. Like, these were things that if you had told me about four or five years ago, I'll tell you that are you serious? Is it possible? But I had the dream. So if there's anything that I want you to know today, any young girl that is watching me, once you have this dream, please make the move. It may be scary. You may be confused. You may not have money. And I know that I don't want to sound like a motivational speaker to you, but I was doing things and God was in me helping me because some of the things I was doing, like I just kept going. Nothing could stop me. I don't even know how I did it. I don't, if you really ask me to sit down and explain to you how I got to this point in my career, I cannot even say it. All I know is that I did not stop. I was relentless. I was hustling. I was pushing. And I was meeting people. I was talking to people. Any opportunity I get, I will tell you about my brand. I'll tell you about my talent. So please, eh, any beautiful young girl watching me out there, when you have a dream, wherever you are, you feel like you want to leave this particular place to another place, pray about it. And once God gives you that direction, my lovely sister, please move because there's a lot of greatness ahead of you. Hmm. There's a lot of greatness ahead of you. That That's super, super lovely. Um, remember I said you look like money. So would you say having money has given you power in any form? Yes, having money has given me a lot of power. It has given me power to date who I want to date, to fall in love with who I want to fall in love with. And of course, I have like an amazing person I don't want to talk about. But yes, <laughs> having money just gives you you know, you can walk out of situations that you do not want to, you know, and there's some, see, guys, you know, even the guy at the back of the camera, there's some kind of money you have in your account. You will raise your shoulders. You'll be like, you'll be fine when they are talking to you. Like, it's okay. Like, it's just made me realize. And it also made me realize I need to work harder because me, I want more money. Like, there's a lot. I want my Range Rover with Array on it, Array One. You know, like, I have this dream, so... <laughs> But I feel like most importantly, having my own money has just taught me like, you know, it helps me like puts me in check, you know, makes me be in situations that I want to be in, not situations that I have to be in. I do not compromise for anything. Having, having your own money, I cannot overemphasize what it does to you. But basically, it's very, very important. Let me just stop there. It's very important. <laughs> awesome. I agree. Um, but when we talk about economic power, it's usually beyond money mm -hmm. right so if you did not have money do you think that your voice and your power would have been stifled or non-existent in any way i don't think so okay because even before the way i'm saying like now i have money like i'm so billionaire please i'm not but i'm like even before when i started with nothing my voice has always been my power my voice has always been my key like i could have zero naira in my account and i'm speaking to you feel like this girl is the richest girl in the world so i don't even think it's solely about money i think it's just about me knowing my words i went to school i studied journalism i studied french like i know i believe like i just know my words so with or without money I know that this is RA, but of course with money, Sha, but like, I know that I know what RA has to deliver as well. So basically I think without money as well, my, my voice will have been my power. My voice has always been my power. I talk for a living. I get paid for talking. So. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. I agree with you. So we are still talking about money and economic power. We are in a world where a lot of women have money, but they do not have economic power. You know, you see cases of women earning and then they give their spouse or their partner the money and mm -hmm. then now now gives them like a stipend mm -hmm. instead. Or women having money, but they do not have a voice in society mm -hmm. or even in their homes. You know, their partner tells them how to spend this money or mm -hmm. their partner tells them what to do with the money. Or mm -hmm. their partner can wake up tomorrow and say, hey, we don't want you to work anymore. Mm -hmm. So beyond just having money, how can women own their economic power just the way you have done. 
You know, for me, mm, I believe that what a man can do, a woman can certainly do better. And please do not come for me. I just believe that. I don't I don't like the saying when it looks like one is like this and one is like I always I know in the Bible God said, like, you know, be submissive to your husband and all of that. But I think that we have abused it. And oftentimes you want to see that, oh, the man is the head, the woman has to be here. You know, I think that as a society we need to promote more gender equality. We should not just say it, you know, we should try to promote it. And even like to parents raising their children. The way they treat the male children is not the way they even treat the, you know, female children. And, you know, I was reading something and they're like, they train the girls that, okay, you have to get married, you know, listen to your husband and everything. I'm not saying don't get married and listen to your husband, but I just believe that the same training you are giving to your boy child, like, let it be. Like, we talk about gender equality, but it's like, we just talk about it and, you know, we don't really, like, put a lot in that. And I think that we need to start from there because that's the most important thing. Like, that's like, that's the beginning of everything. Awesome. I totally agree with you. So final question, you know, you work in the media space, right? How can the media help promote and improve the perception of women having money, women and money? How can the media help boost women's economic power through the kind of stories that we tell or the portrayal of women in media? So at this point, I'm going to bash the media a little bit. I'm going to bash them and I'm going to raise them up too as well. It's so sad that in the society we live in today, when a woman is doing well for herself, you know, you hear that, oh, this person is taking care of her. Oh, she got the money from this. Like, I don't want to hear about it. You know, recently I was talking about a particular lady that has done really well for herself. And someone was telling me that, oh, but look at what she did to get there. I don't want to hear about it. Like, you know, let's celebrate women when they've done something good. Let's stop attributing the good things that women have done to men. Because some of these women really work hard. And I tell you, I give it to Nigerian women. Nigerian women, some of them work their asses out. Sorry to say that word. But like, they work really hard. So it's just sad that, you know, a woman has done really well. And the next thing you say, oh, it's a man that gave her the money. And we do it a lot. In Nigeria, we do it a lot. And it's sad. Some of, some of us, like, really work hard. Like, I'm working two for seven. Like, I'm always doing something. Like, Imagine I now really blow and you come and tell me it's one man. I'll arrest you because like it's, it's painful because some of them like really put in the work. So I feel like for the media, that's something that I really hate. And when I see it, when people start bashing somebody, I was fighting somebody. I'm not going to call her name, but I was fighting somebody because of a particular woman. This woman has done so well in the media. And you come and tell me that, oh, she was sleeping with this man. Please, let's celebrate what she has done. Because a lot of people sleep with people and actually have nothing. So I'm, I'm, not, I'm not encouraging that though, but I'm like, let's try to celebrate our women. So that's what the media does that I really do not like. And I pray and I wish that it can change. But I also feel like now we are learning, you know, because I see like right now the media has been, you know, I feel like they're learning because it was, it was horrible. It was really bad. And for me, I feel like we really need to work on that. You know, I'm a media personality as well. And I understand how it goes. I know that sometimes we want to sell stories, but let's be careful. Let's think about the people because you cannot generalize. There are still some bad eggs out there, but hey, there are still some Nigerian women putting in the work. So let's not even take that for granted. So yeah, I feel like that's my my take on that. It was so nice to it was so nice to be here. And you know, quickly before I just go, um, I know a lot of young girls watch me. I checked my DM the other day, and there were so many messages. And if there's anything I want to tell you, those dreams are valid. You are equipped for greatness. Like there's a lot of greatness in you that you yourself you don't even imagine. So if you have a dream, you have something you want to do, please push it. No matter the discouragement you get, no matter people discouraging you, telling you you cannot do it. I, Ria Abdul, I'm telling you that you can do it. So I want you to say one day that Ria said it. One girl, one Ghana girl said it. You can do it. So whatever dream that you have, please make sure it becomes a reality. Because once again, baby girl, you are equipped for all the greatness. So I really did enjoy the conversation. I always like things like this where I get to speak to, um, you know, a lot of people that want to hear from people like us who, who have done it or who are still doing it. So this was beautiful. A big shout out to Bella Ninja and the She Tang. I think this is an amazing initiative. And I think that a lot of women are going to get their power back and, you know, become more financially stable. Like I said, that's very important. You know, now they know that a woman has to have her own. Forget about everything you see on social media. Da, 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 da. Hey, you need to have your money. It's very important. It saves you from a lot of insults and so many things. So yeah. And when you get that money, don't get the money and now be disrespectful. You still need to, you know, because some women, when you say they have money, they're like raising shoulders. So you still need to have that money and still, you know, be humble. 
So hey guys, I want you to be very active. I want you to really, really follow this conversation. And the only way you can do it is to use the hashtag, her money, her power. This is such a beautiful conversation. And I'm sure that at the end of this campaign, a lot of greatness will come out from some of you beautiful ladies. So do make sure that you follow this conversation.